And that's it. I'm done. Hi, my name is Mark Ensley, and I have just finished my master's degree in information systems engineering from Johns Hopkins University. Now, I was doing what's known as the EP program. That's known as engineering for professionals. What that means is you generally have to have a full-time job in the industry before they'll let you into the degree. And yes, it generally means that the classes will be a little bit easier and a little bit lighter of a workload. When I did my degree, I was working as a ServiceNow developer for a federal contractor. So for this, you have to take 10 courses in total. And the first three are the foundations courses. These are classes you have to take regardless of your focus area. And they do tend to be the harder ones. And of course, you'll see a lot of newer students when you're in these classes. So going on a little bit up, we pick a, a focus area, right? So there's a bunch of different focus areas, and I'll go over those in a second. But I pick the software engineering focus area. So that's where you're seeing, you know, agile, object-oriented design, DevOps, software safety. Now, as I get near to the top, I start to take some different courses, like some project management courses. Reason for this is because they're easier, and I was starting to get into project management related things where I work. So I figured that it made more sense to go ahead and do those types of classes. Yeah, so there's some undergraduate courses that you'll need to take first. And uh, if you haven't already done that in your bachelor's, obviously, because I think a lot of people are going to already have that from their bachelor's. Now, don't worry if your intro programming classes didn't use Java or Python. Mine use C, and they still allowed me to substitute that in. Then discrete mathematics, I actually directly had that. But I think a discrete structures could work, too. Of course, just, you know, when you apply anything that you can think of, just send it to them and say, hey, will this count as the prereq? So then you have your foundations courses. Foundations courses are those three classes that you have to take, and generally people will take those at the beginning. Then we have the data analytics focus area. I didn't do that, so I can't speak as much to it. Data engineering, kind of the same thing. I don't know if I even have one class in here. Program management. So I did a few classes out of here, and this is sort of your more managerial focused focus area and I ended up doing some classes here because I was doing more management related work at the time at work. Then there's this enterprise engineering. So you may have heard me say I took software engineering. Well, I guess it's not called software engineering anymore for the track anyway. And I don't think that really matters because it doesn't go on your degree or anything. But I noticed the software safety sitting in here. And, you know, I know that used to be part of the software engineering track. So it looks like they've sort of pulled that into enterprise engineering. Then there's intelligent systems engineering. Again, I don't think I did any of these. Uh, Human-centered engineering. This is sort of your UX type degree focus area. Of course, regardless of which one of these you take, you get the information systems engineering degree. But I did do a few out of here, and I did find them to be, you know, useful and not overly difficult. So then there's one for the Internet of Things, which again, I didn't really do this one. So was the degree hard? Not really, at least not in the way I was thinking it was going to be. Now, I had the tendency to choose classes that I didn't think would be difficult because I was doing a full-time job at the time that was very technical and required a lot of programming. So my thought was, well, I want to limit the amount of programming I do outside of that, or I'm just going to burn out hard. So I do think there are probably some more technical classes I could have chosen that would have given me a bit more of a technical run for my money. That being said, the workload compared to my bachelor's degree was very small. And I know that that's by design, right? It's the Engineering for Professionals program. So they designed it to not be as intensive as your bachelor's degree. Now, even though it wasn't hard, it was a lot of work. And what I mean by that is to actually meet the requirements of the class, sometimes you have to write really long papers. Sometimes you have to do a lot of research. But it's also true that if you do your due diligence and put the effort in, the graders are really generous. The software engineering course I took probably went the most poorly for me. And that's because I decided to take it as a half summer course. And what I learned from that course is that I should not take half summer courses. But 
I wished I hadn't done it that way because I don't feel like I learned as much as I could have from that class and I sort of struggled through it because it was so fast. And had I known it was a half summer course and it was so abbreviated, I probably wouldn't have done it that way. That being said, we were turning in our group project deliverables week by week and the professors were giving us scathing <laughs> reviews. They were basically saying, this isn't even close, this isn't how this works. And then the next week they'd say, did you read our notes from last time? This still doesn't make any sense. And we just kind of kept turning them in and they kept giving us B minuses on them, which we weren't thrilled about, but we saw, okay, passing grade, do we really want to turn around and you know try to redo this stuff? And the answer was simply no. I mean, we're doing full-time jobs, these classes are difficult, and it's so abbreviated that we felt, okay, we just need to move forward. Now let's talk about the bad thing about the degree. I had my employer pay for this and I'm very thankful for them for offering to do that and getting me through my master's degree financially because had I not had an employer to pay for it, I cannot say I would have taken this degree. And as far as my recommendations go with this specific degree at Johns Hopkins, I generally don't recommend you take it unless you have some sort of subsidization. That could be your employer paying for it, that could be some kind of scholarship, but the classes range between $5,000 and $8,000. Near the end, I was seeing $6,000 to $8,000, and that's a lot of money to pay out of pocket considering that there are 10 courses and there are cheaper master's degrees out there. Now, I'd say there are reasons to do it even if you're paying out of pocket. One would be if you want to have Johns Hopkins on your resume or just attend Johns Hopkins University, which is something I really did want to do. Now, I'm not sure if I would have been willing to pay out of pocket for that, but I really did want to do it. So one thing I loved out of it was you really do get some excellent, excellent professors. I mean, people that have been working in this field in high ranking positions for a very, very long time. And even me, somebody that's got, you know, a little bit of an ego and I tend to be judgmental in who I listen to. But some of the people that we were given as professors, those people are people that have my trust and are really experts in their field. So if that's something you're looking for, this degree might be one to look at. Then beyond that, there's really a lot of benefits when it comes to what could you get out of this degree. So I'd say that for me, it was more about honing particular skills. And it turned out I kind of utilized it to move into a management role at work. And for anyone that generally follows me, yeah, this is sort of me announcing that, that technically I'm no longer a software developer. I am a manager at this point. That being said, I still do software development in my career. It's still some percentage of my workload and that will continue into the foreseeable future. I'm lucky enough to work somewhere where you can have a management role and still do technical stuff for a certain percentage of your time. But there are a lot of other skill sets that you could hone this way. In fact, I'd say management is really just one of the smaller directions that you can go. It just seems to be the way that I kind of went. If you're trying to avoid management and you want to keep this degree purely technical, actually you really can't because the foundations courses uh, include a lot of management stuff. So you can't fully keep it out of the management realm, but you can choose to focus heavily on technical things. And you saw some of the technical things in uh, the courses I was going over and the tracks. You know, there's Internet of Things, which is something that a lot of people think there's going to be a lot of demand for in the future. There's data engineering. That's something that people think there's going to be a lot of demand for in the future. Software engineering, I'd say, is still in there. It's just under enterprise engineering. And I do feel like the courses provided here are actually helpful if you're trying to get into these areas. One thing I really did enjoy about this degree was it was a lot more about your ideas. And for all I know, that's every master's degree. This is the only master's degree I've actually taken. But I feel like Johns Hopkins put a particular emphasis on, you know, you're qualified at this point, you're working at this point. So we want to know that you know the stuff that, you know, we're teaching you. We want you to prove that you actually did understand it. But more importantly, we want us to show you that you can bring your own ideas to the table when faced with something like this. 
So that ended up having me learning, I think, more than I would have had I just been pushed to regurgitate information I had been taught, especially because in IT, in technology, you have a lot of change over time. So what they teach you may or may not be relatively up to date. I'd say this degree was more up to date than most things I've seen out there today. But it's more about you showing, hey, there's this new technology, the, the Internet of Things, right? AI was a big one <laughs> near the end. And can you adapt to these things? Can you come up with ideas for these things? Can you find potential flaws or security vulnerabilities in them? The classes were these interesting mixture of very hands-on and not very hands-on at all. I'd say more of the classes I took were not hands-on, but I had a few classes here and there that were very hands-on. The DevOps class that I took, that class was very hands-on. It had us installing tons of virtual machines on our personal computers, and in some cases our work computers. So it actually sort of forced us to work with what we had in order to make a working system. And while I thought that might be a little bit unfair or could put some students in a bad position, at least for me and everyone I worked with in the class, it worked out okay. Another thing I can say is that this degree does make for an excellent networking opportunity. That may be a little less true now when I started it. It was a combination of in-person and hybrid where today it's mostly online. You know, you'd have classes that were required in person in the beginning and then some that you could go to or not or attend remotely basically, and then some that were only remote by design. So now it seems like all the classes are just remote by design. That being said, you're still working with students that are going to Johns Hopkins University and an engineering major, so you'll definitely meet some interesting and intelligent people. So how you experience this degree and how much you get out of it is likely going to have a lot to do with how you take the degree. And what I mean by that is I did one course at a time. I never did more than one. And I would recommend doing it the way I'm doing it if you're doing a full-time job that you put a decent amount of effort into. Trying to do two classes at a time could prove difficult. And I mean, if you think about it, if you did two classes at a time all the way through, you could complete this in five semesters, theoretically, which is really awesome. But you're going to have a rough time if you do it that way. And I mean, I'm someone that I think is pretty good at handling a large workload, but you don't know which classes are going to have the heavier workloads. I ran into classes that looked easy, but had a pretty heavy workload. Then there were others that looked like they were going to be difficult, but turned out to have a very light workload. And a lot of times there were factors that would predict that, that you really couldn't tell by looking at the course. And one of those was like switching systems. We switched from the Blackboard system to Canvas. So we had a few semesters where the workload was reduced by 30 to 50% because the professors couldn't figure out how to use uh, the new tool, basically. But if you try to do multiple at a time, you will likely run into a situation where you get two classes that are a heavy workload. And you can survive this, but you are not going to have a good time. At least I know I wouldn't have had a good time. So do I recommend this degree? Definitely if your employer is paying for it. Maybe if they're not. And if they're not, I'm basically offloading the decision to you. You're going to have to figure this out yourself because it's too much about you if you're paying $6,000, $8,000 per class. You're going to have to decide if there's something in there that's really worth it to you. Because there's a lot that you can get as far as education in your specialty area for that much money. Now, if your employer is paying for it, I'd say it's almost a no-brainer. Obviously, there are other programs that are also really good, but I can go ahead and give my recommendation of this one if your employer will pay for it because it's doable. You can get through it. It doesn't have like any gotchas that I really ran into, even though there were some things like, you know, a B minus is failing. You still, you know, do okay because the teachers are really generous graders. So in general, I would say yes. I, I would recommend doing this degree. And if you are paying for it out of pocket, that's where I'd say you better take a look at what you're trying to get out of it. If you have any questions about the degree, put them down below. I'll try to answer them if I can. And have a good night.